Hi everybody, I'm Nick Sayer. This is my entry video for the Crazy Clock for Hackaday 2015 prize uh, for best product. Um, the Crazy Clock as it is, uh, one of the, the criteria for the contest is uh, that the um, device or product should solve a particular problem. It's difficult for me to say uh, what the problem would be that I'm trying to address with this. Except perhaps that maybe I could say that clocks are just too boring. Um, these are whimsical clocks, you know. Uh, the purpose they serve is perhaps limited, but uh, they're fun. And they're artistic and artful, and I don't know if art really has to have a purpose. Um, these are not so much prototypes as examples, uh, because as a product, this is sort of well past the prototyping stage. Uh, I've got two clocks here to demonstrate two of the ten different firmware loads uh, that are possible for the Crazy Clock board. Uh, this one here um, is called the Crazy Clock. If you watch it long enough, you'll see the second hand change speeds. It has three different speeds that it runs, uh, and of course it balances a period of slow ticking with an equal period of long ticking so that it maintains correct time. Uh, this one over here is the Lazy Clock. It does all of its ticking all at once, and then just stops. Uh, both, you'll see, are uh, showing the same, roughly the same time. Uh, they are, in fact, accurate. Uh, that was one of the, the problems. If you read the uh, update logs on the uh, project for the Crazy Clock on Hackaday.io, one of the challenges I ran into was that I discovered shortly after, uh, well, shortly before the production ran began, that the um, Clocks, the, the movements were, were not keeping very good time. They were running about um, 10 seconds a day too fast. So that was one of the challenges I had to uh, sort out uh, in very short order indeed. <clears throat> uh, but what I have now is a combination of a uh, enhanced uh, hardware design and also some extra software that I can load um, to make up for variances in... Uh, production runs for you know different component tolerances and things like that. Uh, so now I can actually say with a straight face that these clock movements keep time uh, within 10 parts per million, which is you know 30 seconds a month or so if I'm remembering properly. Uh, so as a product, uh, this is what the crazy clock actually is. This is a standard Levette stepper motor secondhand clock movement. Um, it looks no different now than it did when I got it from the manufacturer. Uh, inside, the manufacturer supplies this printed circuit board. You can see there is a, a chip on board that's potted. Uh, that's the oscillator and counter. Uh, and then it connects up here to two uh, points to solder uh, to the coil. Uh, there's a crystal on the bottom, through hole crystal. And then these two pads here uh, are friction fit against two contacts coming from the battery. Uh, what I've done is I've made this. This is my replacement board. Uh, this uh, fits in the same footprint. Uh, it includes a uh, user accessible uh, in-circuit um, uh, programming header that you can use with pogo pins to reprogram the board in the field if necessary. Uh, and it has a boost converter. This, this left-hand section up here is a 3.3-volt uh, boost converter from a AA battery. And then over here is the AT-Tiny AT uh, 45, uh, the, the actual controller chip that does the work. Uh, and then a 32 kilohertz crystal. Um, because this whole thing runs at less than 1 megahertz and is powered only by a battery, it's exempt from FCC Part 15. Um, so as a product, it's ready to go. What I need now is a retail outlet for them. I need to be able to put a ton of these in the store somewhere. That's what really is separating this from a commercial, commercially successful product. Um, and my five minutes is almost up. So uh, there we are. Thank you very much for your consideration.